Welcome to the Mindful Soul Center podcast. Today's episode is a mini-sode. My name is Amy Adams. I'm your host and the producer of this podcast. Today's topic is avoiding avoidance and other ways to help a grieving friend. One quote that I love, uh, I think it's in the top five of all my quotes, is by Heraclitus. It basically says, no man can cross the same river twice. And that's true. Every day, our life is changing. Every day, we have a new experience, new information new ways of being and sometimes though that way of being is a way that we're not looking forward to it includes loss accidents death any of these kinds of things can disrupt our life the river of life is always flowing and changing sometimes it's in ease and it's crystal clear. Sometimes it's a storm and it is muck. This is how our life is. So the reason why I'm doing this episode today is because my dearest friend, Christine, lost her sister, Ellen, to death by suicide. And I don't like saying that word out loud. I don't like talking about it. It is so disruptive um, and it leaves the people behind in a state of being that is just uh, filled with confusion. It's just such a tragedy and it is something that is happening more and more every year. Suicide rates are increasing. And another thing that I've noticed in my life is that there are so many people in my life that have had a sister or a partner or someone very close to them that has committed suicide. So it's one of those things that we don't want to talk about. I was thinking about this because I was thinking, what can I do to help my friend? I mean, I can cry with her, I can hug her, except for she's really far away from me. You can send flowers, you can do all the traditional things that you do, you can express your sympathy and condolences, but there's more to it. How do you deal with it? Do you avoid it? Do you avoid your friend? Do you force your friend to talk about it? I know there are many people now because we have the wonderful, beautiful internet. So there are people talking about it more, making it public, talking about how we can help. So this is my contribution to the conversation. And I spoke with some friends of mine who have experienced loss. I myself have experienced a lot of loss um, in my life. And also just, uh, it doesn't even have to be death. It can be some kind of other tragedy. But the, the thing is, is that your friends need you. And especially then. And avoiding them doesn't help them. Ignoring them doesn't help them. Yeah, giving them space, okay. But there are things that you can do that you don't have to be in their face. I've gone through uh, conversations with people and doing other research and have come up with a list. I've created an infographic that I'm posting on the website. But not only that, there is also this podcast, which I'm going to talk about a lot of different things that you can do. How we can support our friends in their grief. Avoid avoidance. What does that mean? Well, it's something you do when your friend is in the pain of grief. First and foremost, don't ignore your friend. They already can be feeling distraught, isolated, and devastated. They are coping with a radical change in their life. They have changed. They are not the same person you encountered just a few days or weeks ago. Don't expect them to be. Remember, your friend's loss is complex and painful. Grief is a natural response to loss. 
There is no predetermined time for a person to grieve. Everyone is different. Grief can ebb and flow. When we grieve the loss of someone through death, we also lose immediacy and we lose possibility. It's no longer possible to share secrets with them, to call or text them, to meet up with them for a coffee. It's simply not possible. The loss of possibility is only one facet of death. Sometimes during the grieving process, your friend might feel lost, distraught, scared, isolated, angry, hurt, despondent, confused, abandoned, and may indeed feel a loss of place in their family or community or other feelings of identity loss. Thus, your friends need you more than ever. Here's a list of some ways you can support your friend. Don't avoid your friend. Be awkward. Listen. Show up. Do something actionable, like helping them with some chores, like doing the laundry or watching the kids for an hour or walking their dog. Cook a meal and drop it off. You don't have to have a face-to-face -face conversation. If they don't want to answer the door, just leave it for them. Don't ask for permission. Show up and do it. Make it easy for them to accept your help. Offer them concrete things that you can do for them to help them. Spend time with your friend. Invite your friend to go for a walk in nature or for a run or even out for a coffee. You don't have to engage in an in-depth conversation. It's okay to experience moments of silence with another person. Our discomfort and their pain is something that we must deal with. We can't ignore it. We can't hurry them along in the grieving process and simply say, oh, get over it, hurry up, blah, blah, blah. Ask your friend to tell you a story or recount a memory about the person they lost. Or if you knew that person well, share a memory with them. Say the deceased person's name out loud. Don't walk on eggshells. If your friend doesn't want to talk about the person they lost, they'll tell you. When you don't know what to say, even saying that you don't know what to say can be enough. Simply approach the conversation from a place of love without your own personal expectations of how you think your friend should be. Send a note or a card via snail mail. Do it frequently. Send them a care package. Check in with them regularly. Send them a text message every week or call them and let them know you don't expect them to return the call or message. Let them off the hook. Don't take it personally. Don't assume anything. Ask questions and be present. When you're with your friends, turn off your phone unless it's urgent. Be with each other, experience these moments. So be present, turn off your phone, spend time. You don't have to spend hours and hours and hours with people. Simply be with them for 15 minutes, be with them for an hour or three hours, whatever it is. You can spend a day with somebody sometimes. Bake some food together, do something together, create an activity, create new memories. The other and final thing is, is to remember they don't need you to fix them. They really are not broken. None of us are really broken. We might use that expression that some, uh, an event in our life broke us or it, yeah, it changed us. It might have radically changed us, but broken, I'm not really down with that because basically no one really needs fixing. They need to know that they can lean on their friends in times of need for someone to hold them up when they can't hold themselves up. 
They need you to believe in them. And they need people to allow them to grieve. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I will um, be posting the infographic with many of these tips on the website. Please share it around. Let's talk about death and have open conversations. And in the new upcoming uh, December and January issue of Mindful Soul Center magazine, we will be focusing a little bit on um, loss. We'll be focusing on a lot of really fun things also. So please take a look for that. That's coming out on the 26th of November. It's available to read for free online. You can purchase it as well and download it and uh, download the accompanying audios that come with it. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'd love to hear from you. Tell me what you think. How can we support our friends? Tell me a story. Tell me a story about how you were awkward and how you messed up. Tell me a story about how you felt like you helped your friend. Let's share stories. Let's have a conversation about things that matter. Our lives, the ones that we're conscious of right now, they're right here, right now, and let's try to live them to the fullest and help each other be the best we can be. Send me an email, amy at themindfulsoulcenter.com. I'd love to hear from you. You can support the podcast by buying uh, one of our t-shirts or our yoga shorts or some other products from our website. Our website is themindfulsoulcenter.com. Our premiere issue of the magazine is up now and some other podcast episodes. You can find them all there. You can find meditation videos. If you like this podcast, go to your favorite platform site and leave a review. Thank you so much. Until next time.